Hey guys, today we're sharing with you our top 10 tips for foil kites. Before you launch your foil kite, you'll want to check your lines and your bridles for any knots or line inversions. If you launch your kite and it has any of these things, your kite won't fly properly and it could potentially be dangerous. The key here is not to rush when you're launching your kite and to make sure everything is correct. You'll also want to make sure that your deflate velcro strap is closed. Use line extensions for those low wind days. Fly surfer kites come with line extensions pre-installed on larger sizes, but for your 12 meter or smaller kites, consider adding line extensions to get the most out of your kite. So where we kite most often is the Great Lakes, and the wind here is typically up high, so we recommend adding extensions to all of your foil kites. Yes, the kite will definitely feel a little bit more sluggish with the extensions, but the trade-off is you'll get more power, which definitely comes into play when you're boosting. Depending where you live and what your kite conditions are like, kite extensions can make a huge difference. We recommend that you pre-inflate your foil kite before you launch. In lower winds, the more you pre-inflate your kite, the easier it's going to be to launch. But in high winds, you don't want to pre-inflate too much because you'll get slingshot forward when you put the kite up. Easiest way to pre-inflate your kite is with a leaf blower. But if you don't happen to have a leaf blower on the beach, then grab a friend and pre-inflate the kite together. You simply do this by holding the kite towards the wind and letting it fill with air. You can do this by yourself, but it will take a little bit longer in time to do so. So in lower winds, we recommend that you just do a simple hot launch. In higher winds though, you'll want to do a side launch, which can be done with the help of a fellow kiter or with your sandbag. If you're flying your foil kite in extremely light winds, try depowering it a little bit. This may seem totally counterintuitive, especially if you're used to flying inflatable kites, but trust us, if you fly the kite slightly depowered, it's going to fly much better than it would if it's fully powered. What happens when you're flying your foil kite in super light wind and you fully power it up? When you pull in the bar, the kite will start to backstall. It's very easy to oversheet a foil kite. So what you want to do is let the bar out, let the kite pick up some speed and generate apparent wind. You don't want to depower your foil kite too much. You want to have a little bit of light backstall because it's going to give you sharper turns. You want to check your line length regularly. If your kite doesn't feel like it's flying quite right, it could be that your lines are out of whack. If you tend to jump in one direction more so than the other, then it's possible that the lines on that particular side will stretch more so than the other side. You'll also want to check to see that your safety line hasn't wrapped around your front lines. This can happen if you tend to do your back rolls or down loops in one direction more than the other. If you checked your lines and your foil kite still doesn't seem to be flying quite right, the next step is to do the mixer test. Hold the front and brake lines together and make sure that the knots on the A, B, C, and Z bridles are all aligned. If they aren't aligned, then you just want to adjust accordingly so that they are. If you want to get the most out of your foil kite, you'll want to make sure to choose the appropriate board for the conditions you're riding in. Bigger twin tip boards, commonly referred to as doors, will get you riding in a couple knots less wind than your smaller, regular twin tip boards will. For ultimate low wind kiting though, you'll definitely want to consider a foil board. The nice thing about foil boards is that you can actually go down a kite size even in light winds. For example, when I'm foil boarding, I'm on my 12 meter kite and that's an 8 or 9 knots of wind. If you drop your foil kite while riding, you'll need to know how to relaunch it. If you drop your kite on the water with the leading edge up, you'll just grab the center lines and jerk them until the kite comes back up. If your kite is on the water with the leading edge down, start by grabbing the steering lines and jerk the kite back up in the air. Once the kite is a few meters up from the water, let go of one of the steering lines so that the kite flips over. After you've done that, quickly steer it up and over your head. On the newer model foil kites, holding one line will do the trick. If you end up swimming, which I often do, don't worry, it's not a big deal, just don't panic. First, you'll want to wrap your safety line around the bar a few times before you grab the rest of the lines and neatly wrap them up. Get to your kite, grab the edge, and begin to swim. If I can, I'll grab both of the edges and fold the kite so that there's less resistance as I swim. You'll have to make a judgment call though, depending how far from shore you are. If you're pretty close, then chances are you won't need to worry about folding or wrapping your kite. You can just swim back and you won't have an issue. However, if you're pretty far from shore, you may want to wrap up your kite entirely because the kite could take on some water. The more water that the kite takes on, the heavier it's going to be and the more difficult it's going to be to swim. When it comes to landing your foil kite, if the wind is really light, you can do the backstall technique, but in higher winds, you'll definitely want to stick with the side landing because it's safer. In order to land a foil kite using the backstall technique, grab the steering lines as high as you can and pull them down as much as you can. Keep pulling until the kite touches the ground safely. It is possible to use the backstall technique in medium strength wind, but it can be very dangerous if you don't commit 100% and abort midway through the landing. You'll be slingshot forward just like what happened here to Fred or to me as I hit all the bushes on my way. All in all, it is best to stick to side landing in anything above light wind. Finally, if you're looking to buy a foil kite for low wind conditions, then don't rush to buy the biggest kite available. 
The best foil kite for you will depend on your body weight as well as a few other factors. For example, a smaller female is going to need a much smaller foil kite than a larger male will for the exact same conditions. Take into consideration not just your size though, but your current quiver, your light wind board or foil board situation, and the conditions of the spots that you kite the most. Two guys exactly the same size will likely require totally different foil kites if one is kiting in Squamish versus Toronto. These two guys will also require totally different foil kites if one has a goal of boosting high and the other one has a goal of gaining speed. If you have a foil board, you may want to look into a race foil kite. Alternatively, if you're looking to boost high, you may want to look into a free ride foil kite. All right guys, those were our top 10 tips for foil kites. Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye.